You know, I think you got two teams playing um, at a high level right now, and that's, that's what's going to make for a fun Thursday night. Um, but I'm sure they feel like they're playing really well after what happened this past weekend, and feel like we're playing well. Feel like our guys have, after the bye week have really responded. We knew that we were in need of that bye week. We could just sense uh, the mental frame more than anything else, and we really responded well up uh, in the Washingtons. I thought we put together two really good games. How hard is it to chase them up? Well, I think both teams, you know, both teams uh, in Pac-12 play, they're shooting a, they're actually shooting a three better than we are. Um, they're the only team in 24 games that scored more points in transition than we have. So you got two teams that are, I think, very, very similar that way. You've got um, a lot of offensive guys that can make shots and make shots from deep, and yet you got an inside presence. They've got inside presence. We've got inside presence. I think that's why um, when you look at the first matchup, um, in late December, it came down to the last play of the game. So it's, uh, I think both teams are similar that way, just with uh, their ability to, to play inside out basketball at the offensive end. Do 18 to 21 year old kids carry that last game and that last shot that game in December onto this court? Do you want them to think about it? Do you not want them to think about it? No, we've had a lot of games um, since then. You know, I think we were most worried about that going to Oregon State. Um, so, and I think that's why I give our guys an awful lot of credit. And that's where the veterans leadership come into and the freshmen getting onto the next play and the next game, having that, that ability to do that because you have to do that. And I was probably most worried about it uh, in that next game, uh, Oregon State. And we were a little bit hesitant in the first half, but got things put together and did enough things to be able to come away with a win. So that was the game I was really concerned about it because it was only a couple days later. Uh, and that does sting you. you know, when you know you've got the game, you had the game, um, you contested the shot as well as you can contest it. And a very good player just made a, a very good shot. And, but I think the guys have moved on from that. Now, obviously, it's going to get brought up. Uh, they're going to see clips and tapes and stuff going into this game. But there's a lot more other things that we're showing them about the first game than that. You talked about going into the bye week so much about defense. And, and now coming out, you talked about mental recovery. Hindsight being what it is, is, do you think that was part of the issues, mental or physical? Particular? Well, I mean, just the, the amount of time. No, it has nothing to do with uh, the progress defensively. Um, you know, I think it's, it's who we are. It's our identity. You know, we've been the number one offensive efficient team start to finish <laughs> through 24 games. So uh, yeah, that's our identity, and, and that's fine. That's what this team's identity is because they can really score the ball. You know, we're, we're one of, I don't know of many other teams that have had four guys score 20 more points in a single game. I mean, that's unheard of, uh, let alone six guys in double figures, a six man that comes off the bench and does what he does in, in Aaron Holiday. So it is an offensive-minded group that understands it. Uh, we've got a great IQ at that end. We pass it well. We dribble it. We shoot it. Now, with that said, defensively, it's been more of a progression. And we've had a little bit more of a roller coaster effect there. I do think the last two games and doing and doing it away from home is encouraging because our last two games defensively have been steps in the right direction. Your, your uh, ranking for defensive efficiency adjusted is outside where any team in the last 10 years that's made the final four is. Is that you feel like you can overcome that or get to where you need to be? Well, we're just, you know, it, we're a work in progress. You know, the month of February, our defensive efficiency is 93. Um, you know, so if you've got an efficiency of 93, that's pretty good. Um, you know, our goal is 94, 95. So if we can hit that mark, we just haven't been able to hit that mark a lot. Uh, and but it's learning. It's learning to play at the possessions that we're, we're not a team that's playing um, at a slow tempo. So we've talked about how our guys are really good offensively playing at a fast tempo. They've also got to learn to play defense that well at a fast tempo, and that's not always easy. Uh, the last two games against two teams offensively uh, that were pretty good uh, when we came into that into those two games, we did a really nice job defensively. Now, does that mean it's a trend or it's a it's something that now is set in stone? No, uh, but we're moving in the right direction at least since hitting February. Now we're going to get arguably our you know our best test of the season playing against a high octane offense in Oregon. So uh, we'll have a better understanding of it if it's something that just happened last weekend or something that we can build on. But I think this team gets it. I think they understand it. Um, they've learned lessons along the way and the few losses that they've had. And every time we've seen improvement, especially at that end. And 
Um, we saw that this past weekend, and hopefully we can keep building on it. These are the uh, final weeks of months, so you're going to be coaching your son. What kind of emotions come with that? Uh, I hope that both of us can just continue to enjoy the blessings that we've had. It's been incredible. At first, my oldest son, Corey, I got two years in New Mexico and then two years here, and now he's a video coordinator, so we get to share in those moments the, the tough losses or the great wins. Uh, that's been terrific. And Bryce is, you know, Bryce is not concluding, but he's in the midst of uh, a career that's winding down that's been very, very special. You know, he's got a chance to be over 500 assists. He's got a chance to be in the top 15 in scoring. He's got a chance to be one, two, and three point goals made. Uh, you know, he's got a chance to be, have a lot of winning seasons. You know, last year was uh, not what he wanted or what our team wanted. But so I'm very, very proud, uh, as I am proud of Isaac and proud of Gerald and uh, the other seniors that have meant so much to our program. But, you know, that father son dynamic is fun. And it's, we have had a blast to this point. And hopefully we got a lot more fun coming. We're into the second season now with a 30 second shot clock instead of 35. What sort of impact do you feel like that's had on your program and on the college game in general so far? Well, it's hard. Uh, I haven't looked at college in general, but <laughs> we're playing faster. Uh, now, you know, hopefully we can continue to recruit that way. I think we have because the class that we got coming in right now, it's ranked second in the country, and we're still trying to add to that class. And we're recruiting that way. We're recruiting speed. We're recruiting guys that can make shots and have an IQ that can play the game at a fast tempo just because that's what we like and that's, that's what we'd like to coach and and this year's kind of embodied that we've had fun with this group doesn't mean every year it's going to be like that but when you've got a 30 second clock you do things offensively and defensively that there are ways that you can speed the game up versus slowing it down um, so I do think the game's trending towards getting faster um, just with the rules that have changed how how much faster, I don't know. I haven't seen all those analytics, but uh, we're definitely playing faster. How has TJ handled the physicality in the freshman year? And is he a more physical player than people think that he's looking at? Well, whether it's physical or whatever you want to say, he's you're looking at 17 and 9, shooting 65% from the field and 46 from three. And uh, and then I was on the phone today with a with, uh, media outlet talking about it, that he's a stretch forward. It's got a two to one assist turnover ratio. This stuff's unheard of. Uh, he's just so skilled inside and out, and now we're 24 games in it. Um, and one might say that, you know, we struggled a little bit against Arizona, and we struggled a little bit, obviously, at USC, uh, and those weren't two of his better games. So that's how big a key he is to us. He can just hurt you in so many different ways. If, if he's not scoring, he can really assist you. And I thought on this road trip, he got back to being very aggressive again, and I do. I, I think he and Lonzo even the, to some extent, they may not admit it, but I think by the time we got to the SC game, they needed a break. Uh, this had been a long stretch. You know, I talked about it. We were first to start league play. We were last to get a bye. Um, you know, now the schedule switches to where uh, we got more home games than road games, so you don't have as much travel. We've only got one road trip left. Um, so hopefully mentally they can stay fresh because they are freshmen. And I think they've handled it extremely well. A lot of hype around them ton of hype in the, the Washington game. It was sold out. I think it was their first sellout of the season. Uh, and those two freshmen couldn't handle things any better. I, I, two weeks ago, I don't know if they handled the same because they, there's, they've just been wore down a little bit. And I see a, a new freshness to them, and I saw that in TJ.